You are now tuned in to the Believe Podcast Network. Do you believe? The ISO with Dan Dickow and SB Live Sports, brought to you by the Believe Podcast Network, the number one podcast network for professionals. Here's Dickow from the deep corner for three. Uh oh. Uh oh. It's all now. Downtown Dan Connect. Every morning when I'm working out, I'm listening to your podcast. Keep up the great work. I mean, I've seen Dan Dicko hit some big shots in the NCAA tournament. <laughs> I got to salute you, man. Like, I've been watching you since I was in high school trying to mimic all your moves. Dan Dicko, the ISO with SB Live Sports. Today being a Wednesday, January 19th. 2022, that means one thing. It is mailbag episode time. So um, if you've got a question, if you're a frequent listener to the show, first off, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, enjoy being a part of this for SB Live Sports, where we're bringing you lots of content on many different platforms. Um, um, if you've got questions that you would love to send my way and answer, Email them to me at dickow at scorebooklive.com. Hit me up on social media, Twitter and Instagram at dandickow21, or send a question to some one of our one of our social media tags, whether it's uh, the main SB Live Sports tag or one of our um, state specific channels, uh, and they will get that to me. So. Uh, each Wednesday, answer three questions. Uh, many times it's uh, based on maybe my playing career, uh, my short coaching career, uh, or some of the things that I'm seeing in regards to the broadcast work that I'm doing. So today we've got three questions. First one comes from Chuck in Yakima, and he says, I'm a big NBA basketball fan, and I am following – the trade deadline coming up closely. Um, have you ever been a part of a trade deadline deal? And what trades do you think may happen this year in the trade deadline? Well, Chuck, appreciate the question. Um, got traded lots in my NBA career. And when I say lots, I mean lots. Ten times uh, I was traded. Seemed to be that most of those trades were on draft day. Um, but I was traded midseason on a couple of occasions uh, only one of those, I guess, you could consider a dr- a trade deadline deal. My second year in the NBA with the Atlanta Hawks, uh, I was a part of the trade that brought Rashid Wallace from the Blazers to the Hawks where he played one game before he was then traded to the Detroit Pistons where all of a sudden the Pistons had that last piece that they needed to, to win a couple championships. So uh, I was part of that trade deadline deal. It was myself. Rush, uh, Sharif Abdul Rahim and Theo Ratliff went to Portland in exchange for, I believe it was Wesley Person and Rashid Wallace. And then, as mentioned, Rashid was then traded after one game uh, to Detroit. But uh, with that, it was really interesting. It was funny. I, I, I played the first half uh, of a game, and then I didn't play in the second half. And in that first half, I played really, really well. Um, and I was frustrated. I was really disappointed that – Hey, I didn't get any more more playing time in the second half. What the heck? Um, get home to my apartment in Atlanta, um, and then the phone rings, and it's Billy King, the interim or the GM at the time, uh, and he calls basically to say, "Hey, um, we just traded you, and you're gonna like where you're going. You're going back to your hometown, Portland. <laughs> we traded you to the Blazers." He said, "That's why we couldn't." play you in the second half the trade was in in its final steps of being approved by the league Um, but being that Sharif and Theo uh, played major minutes on the team we had to have them play Um, otherwise everybody would have known something was going on and if you didn't play it wouldn't have been that big a deal so um, or it wouldn't have raised as many questions so um, that's, that was my first experience with the trade deadline deal. Um, it worked out for me because I went back home to the Portland Trailblazers, which is the team I grew up, um, watching, um, dreaming about playing at some point. So, 
Uh, that that was my experience. Do I think the other part of the question is, do I think there will be trade deadline deals this year? Absolutely. Uh, every single year, you're going to see some vets that could provide uh, some experience, some leadership, um, fill a specific role that a contender um, needs to, to be able to uh, maybe make a deep playoff run. You're going to find somebody in that category uh, be traded at the trade deadline. Um, with that, I know there's been a lot of talk about Ben Simmons being in a trade at the trade deadline because it looks like uh, the Sixers and Ben Simmons are not coming any closer to an agreement of him coming back to play. Uh, and I think that's unfortunate. I mean, shoot, uh, I don't, I'm not discrediting the mental health that he's claiming, he's stating, but at the same time, you love to play the game of basketball. Just play the game of basketball. I know Philly's been tough for you as far as – you know, how the playoffs ended last year and fans are on you and it may not be the best fit, this, that, and the other, but um, it'll be really interesting if Philly does move him because his trade value's gotten crushed. So Philly's not going to get as much back in return, but it will be interesting if he gets traded, if all of a sudden magically he's up to play and he's ready to play and he plays well. If, if that's the case, uh, that's going to be, that. that's a storyline to watch for sure if he does get traded. Uh, the other one is uh, people are talking about Russell Westbrook getting traded from the Lakers. I don't see that happening. Um, his contract's too big. He's still too – he's too big of a part of the Lakers and what they're trying to do this year, uh, I think, for them to give up on that. Um, would it be a good fit for him and maybe for the Lakers? Yes. I still think Russell Westbrook's uh, a tremendous player. Um, I don't think those parts with the Lakers fit that well. And I've said that before um, on this ISO podcast in, in different settings. Um, but I don't see that him getting traded in any way. Um, so, Chuck, thanks for the question. <clears throat> question number two comes from Kathy in Portland. And she said, I'm a big Blazers fan. And unfortunately, Damon Lillard uh, is having surgery. He's been healthy almost his whole career up till now. Do you see him coming back stronger than ever? And have you ever had a surgery? Um, yeah, it's unfortunate that Damien uh, has been dealing with, uh, you know, this abdominal issue for almost the whole year. Um, he's kind of been uh, bothered by it. Uh, hopefully the surgery went well and then now the rehab and the recovery goes well and he can get back to being uh, the same player that we all know and that's there's a reason he's a six-time all-star there's a reason he's an olympian uh there's a reason he's an all nba guy and it's a lot of it is obviously his competitiveness his skill but he's also a tremendous athlete who, when with his strength he's able to make a lot of them in very impressive plays so uh your core as an athlete is is central to everything you do so hopefully he gets uh healthy as quickly as possible um and i don't know what the timeline is if he'd be back this year if the blazers are just going to throw in the towel they've obviously fired their old gm and rightfully so and neil olshay but um it'll be interesting to see with anthony simmons playing well do they want to keep giving him a long run uh, with extended minutes does CJ McCollum get traded at the trade deadline? Um, really interesting to see what happens. Um, but uh, I think Damien, um, you know, will have a good recovery. He'll be back to being the player that we all know. And hopefully it's with the Portland Trailblazers and he's not traded with the Blazers doing a complete rebuild. Second part of your question um, was, did I ever have surgeries? Yes, I had multiple surgeries. Sophomore year at University of Washington, I had a broken foot, had to have surgery. Um, my rookie year in the NBA, I had a left meniscus tear. Um, so they, they cut that out, which is essentially two ways to go that surgery. You, you cut it out and you have a shorter recovery time, usually anywhere for a basketball player, three to, to, to eight weeks. I believe mine was right around four and a half weeks. Um, or you sew it back together and it's a couple month um, rehab to get back 100%. Um, and then at my fourth year in the NBA, I tore my Achilles. And that is one of the most severe and major surgeries any athlete can have. Um, you know, big surgery. I missed uh, eight months. In eight months, I was back playing five on five full court, uh, which is one of my most proud accomplishments, to be honest, as an athlete, is 
the speed with which I came back from that injury and then never having had to miss another game or a practice uh, because of an issue with that injury in the rehab. So, uh, yes, I, I did have some surgeries. And, yes, I do think Damian Lillard um, will come back strong. Um, so, Kathy, thank you for the question. Uh, next question is John from Spokane. What do you think of Drew Timmy's last couple games? <laughs> well, uh, John, that's a, that, that, that's an easy question to answer. Last couple of games have been unbelievable. Uh, you put a back-to-back 30-piece games um, at any level, high school, college, or the NBA, you're doing something well. And in particular, with how efficient he has been. You know, in the NBA, you've got your big-time scores. Sometimes those guys get on runs. Um, but the game in, in the NBA is so much different. A lot of it is definitely pick and roll and, and different things. But when a guy in the NBA gets it going, a lot of it is ISO straight to that player, maybe due to their hot hand or maybe due to a mismatch that they have. And because it's a 48 game as opposed to a 40 minute game, there's more possessions. Um, so, so you're going to have a lot more opportunities to, to really if you get hot, to stay hot and stay hot for a long period of time. With the college game being only 40 minutes and also with how good Gonzaga is, it's kind of just spread around, um, you know, the opportunities offensively with that team. They're so unbelievably unselfish, you know, starting with Timmy, the point guard, Nemhart, Chet Holmgren, uh, you know, Rajir Bolton, um, Nolan Hickman, Hunter Salas. They're just a very unselfish basketball team. But when you look at – the last two games, 30 points or more in each of those. He had a stretch where he made 20 consecutive baskets. That's unbelievable. That's unheard of. You could take a lot of player, and and these are baskets where they're not all layups and dunks. They're post moves where he's splitting a double team, he's spinning off of contact, uh, he's getting out in transition, and he's having to finish around and over guys. Uh, So it's not like you're just, you know, giving him transition layups where it's just a free breakaway to a bucket. Um, You could literally not see that stat again from another player, I think, in college basketball for the next 10 years to be safe. You know, 20 consecutive made two-point field goals uh, is absolutely amazing. I mean, I think there's, there's a number of college players currently at any level, Division I, II, III, NAI, whatever it is, you could lock them in a gym with no defense and ask them to make 20 straight eight foot shots in a row from multiple spots on the floor. And they couldn't do it. Now drew Timmy's 20 made field goals in a row with defense and the defense is, you know, geared to stopping him because he's the uh, big focal point of what Gonzaga's offense is. You know, he's got to deal with double teams. He's got to deal with schematics. um, So many different things. So for him to have, a stretch where he made 20 straight field goals, back-to-back 30-point games, absolutely unbelievable. So um, thanks for the questions. If you've got a question, as mentioned at the at the, at the top, send it, Dan, Dan Dickow 21 on social media, Instagram and Twitter. Send it to me on email, dickow at scorebooklive.com. Appreciate you being a listener. Like, subscribe, and review. We appreciate it. Have yourself a great day. The ISO with Dan Dickow and SB Live Sports, brought to you by the Believe Podcast Network, the number one podcast network for professionals. Thank you for listening to the Believe Podcast Network. Do you believe? 